desire we have to avoid personalizing the things that happen to us in our lives. Now, compassion is the next step. In a compassionate life, you recognize that there's no separation between us, that it's the Buddhist idea of one consciousness and many bodies. And there is indeed suffering on the earth. And what we learn is what gives meaning to our life is that after you've had an oceanic connection with something bigger than yourself, you then want to share that experience. You want to let people know that they are not simply a physical body, but this feeling of uh, res residing in love. The, the flow of loving awareness really defines who you are. That experience is not outside yourself. That is, it's a mistake to look for a person to complete yourself, to say, well, I'm a pretty good half a person. If I could only find another half a person to complete me, then everything would be perfect. And of course, that never works. Mm -hmm. It leads to resentment when she quits doing whatever it was she did to make you feel complete. And that's why loving relationships turn to hateful relationships instantaneously because you drop back to that annoying half a person status and it's all about defending your ego, defending your story. True. And it's an idea in Judeo-Christian teaching as well as in the Buddhist teaching that the kingdom of God is within you and not outside. Right. And one of the thrusts in our book, In the End of Suffering, is to argue in favor of the, the non-dual approach, the idea that uh, you and the divine are one. As Thomas Aquinas and St. Augustine argued that there's no happiness on this earth. You'll only be happy in the next life when you become one with God since you're all a bunch of sinners in this life and the Catholic in the corporal doctrine. Life, right. In the corporal life because of Adam's sin, mm -hmm. you're never going to know God. You're never going to find happiness and it will only come after you die. And Augustine and Aquinas wrote extensively arguing about the hopelessness of finding happiness in this life. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the non-dual teaching is that you and the divine are one. Uh, we're trying to do in this book is to mm -hmm. get people to ask the question who they are, and we try and give some steps that allow people to do that. And so when you continue on, um, in these five of the eight <laughs> on the path is community and gratitude as well, and gratitude seems to be something well, that's Well, community is lot. critical. Yes. In order to find a spiritual community or a sangha in which you can safely express and explore your spiritual desires and needs. It's very important to find a, a business... A investment club won't meet these needs, by the way. Mm -hmm. This has to be a safe place to explore your experiences, your, physic, your spiritual experiences. And you see, nothing I've talked about involves belief in anything at all. I'm a fairly unreconstructed physicist. Uh, I've had some experiences in connection with my work at uh, Stanford's Research Institute doing psychic things. And then I'm recapitulating what the Buddhists have taught in straightforward California English so that people will have an idea that these experiences are available. Mm -hmm. It's the idea that God exists as an experience in consciousness, not as an entity out in space. Mm -hmm. And here uh, now, here, all here now available, this experience of the divine, whether you want to call it God or Brahman or many or spaciousness, but the experience of the divine this loving syrup in which we can reside is available to us if we stop the chatter. Mm -hmm. And one of the purposes of this book is to help people, first of all, give up the story, recognize that they are basically non-local awareness rather than what it says on their business card. And the extent to which they identify personally with the business card is a source of suffering. Right. And then we encourage them to move into the spaciousness as a way of life 
and give up the focus on the ego, self-centeredness, and self-pity, and move into spaciousness Mm -hmm. with its generosity and flexibility and joyful life. And community and gratitude. And gratitude, that's what we're offering. Well, that's the program.